So there's three rounds to the game and you get five opportunities to create, build and hopefully score some goals. The first round, from the attacker's perspective, so I'm working with three attackers, two defenders, is the overload round. My name is Matt Jones, I'm an FA Regional Coach Development Officer, working in coach development, supporting grassroots coaches. Today I'm going to guide you through a finishing session, which is aimed at under 14s. Some of the aspects we're going to look at are deception, if you're one-on-one -on -one with a shooting opportunity, how many touches do you take on the ball, is it a first time finish, are you going to look to create a yard of space to get round your defender, or are you going to look to round your defender and have a 1v1 with the goalkeeper. And then when we move through the session to get to us playing this game with a mate and or mates, so 2v1, 2v2, 3v2, it's the supporting role of that player in terms of their positioning and movement. Are they creating an angle to receive the ball if you want to bounce it off them as a wall pass? Or are you looking at a third player combination where it might be a up, back and through? So a typical uh, grassroots coach wouldn't necessarily have access to the full pitch. So we're going to try and make this as realistic as possible and work in the third of a pitch. So that would be the area that I've got available to work with my players. For this particular practice, we've got 12 players, but we'll come on to how you can adapt it with more or less players. Uh, the object of the, the practice is finishing. So we need goals in. We can have goals at each end. And this practice I nickname like a mirrored or a split practice. So I'm going to put in two lines. Effectively, what's happening in this half of the pitch is the same as what's happening in this half of the pitch. Each goal needs a goalkeeper, which is going to test our shooters and finishers. And the way we would set up is defenders on each side, attackers on each side. And because I'm feeling generous, I'm going to give them five opportunities to work together as a team of attackers to hopefully create opportunities to score in and around the penalty box. So 12 players working in a, that's probably a 70 by 40 area, but again, we can shorten it, we can widen it just to progress it or make it fit the needs of our players. But that would be the typical setup. So there's three rounds to the game and you get five opportunities to create, build, and hopefully score some goals. The first round, from the attacker's perspective, so I'm working with three attackers, two defenders, is the overload round. So they get two opportunities to begin with, with one defender resting, to play two 2v1s. If they can, connect and combine, or go solo, try and shoot and score. If the yellow defender intercepts or tackles, turns over possession to keep them motivated, their challenge is to drive to the halfway line, where they would also get a point. That's two out of their five balls. The next two, bring in the third player, bring in the second defender, and player three versus two. So we're overloading three attackers against two defenders outfield, but not forgetting the goalkeeper. Last line of defense, first line of attack. Now there's a fifth ball, and here's where the attackers have the power. So football's about decision-making. We want to empower our players to make decisions, hopefully good, uh, creative, purposeful decisions, but they can choose whether to play a 2v1 or a 3v2, they would just need to communicate it so that if they're playing a 2v1, whichever defender is rotating, takes themselves out of the equation and we play that scenario. Round two, matched up round. So you can play 1v1 for two balls, you can also play a 2v2 for two balls, and then for the fifth ball, you've got a choice as to whether you play 1v1, 2v2. Again, same scoring system applies. Attackers are trying to connect and combine to score or go solo. Defenders are trying to turn over possession, drive to the halfway line. Now we're moving into the third round. Bit of organisation. You're going to rotate as you might do throughout and make sure that you've got two attackers. So the same would be on this side. Two attackers playing up against three defenders. Why are we doing that? Well, the third round is the underloaded round. So remember, we're looking at the attackers and we'll focus in on this half. Typically in grassroots football, as we've done in the first round, we would outnumber the attackers versus the defenders. Why? Because we want them to experience some success. But in a game of football, grassroots or the pro game, 
a lot of strikers are either matched up or outnumbered, especially when you're in and around the penalty box. So we're going to try and create that problem and give them an opportunity to experience it and solve it. So first two balls that they're going to take out, you're going to play a one versus two. So one defender resting. And if I haven't made that point clear, when you've had a go at one round versus one V2, and you come back and recycle, you would obviously change the player who's attacking and also change the defender. Because we don't want a player waiting off for too long. We want to keep that ball rolling time for as long as possible. When you rotate, play another one versus two, and then you would move on to two versus three for the next two rounds. And again, same scoring system applies. Can the strikers shoot and score? Can the defenders intercept and drive to the halfway line? And then for that last bonus round, they would then get to choose whether or not to play a one versus two or a two versus three where they're outnumbered. The last round is the bonus round. Here's where we're going to give the players the chance to choose all five balls, all five opportunities, how they want to play, whether it's overloaded, matched up or underloaded. And we're going to give points to try and give an incentive so that they give themselves more of a challenge. If they go for an overload, so a 2v1, shoot and score, we're going to give them a point. If they choose to play matched up, so it might be a 2v2, shoot and score, we're going to give them three points. And the same point system would apply for the defenders, so there's a little bit of risk and reward. So in this case, if the two defenders intercept and drive to the halfway line, turn over possession successfully, we're going to give them three points. If the attacking team are feeling really brave and they play a one versus two, where they're heavily outnumbered and underloaded and they shoot and score, we're going to give them five points. Again, trying to incentivize them to take on the challenge which is maybe perceived as a little bit harder. And they would have five opportunities to try and score as many points as possible, and then we would swap over teams. So in terms of progressions, making things easier, harder, or just different, we could refer to the step principle, because it's a really good methodology, and I certainly use it because it's memorable. So the first thing we could look at changing to make it harder is the space. We could shorten it down to play in a smaller area. My only tip with this is just make sure that the goal always remains central to the practice, so we've got similar distance left and right. Why does that make it harder? Well, in effect, there's less time to make decisions, less time to act. Also, if the strikers, and we'll just use a 3v2 as an example here, come out, they're faced with their opposition sooner. You could argue though, on the flip side that the strikers are closer to the goal, so in one way it might make it easier, so they might get that shot off quicker. Uh, there's a lot of stats to show that if you shoot quick when you're on scene, the opposition are caught element of surprise out of balance. So there's a little bit of a trade-off there. 